So in today's review, we're going to review Manchester City's title triumphant season, where they broke the Premier League record and won four Premier League titles in a row, which has never been done in the history of the league. The only sour note that Manchester City fans might still be just getting over as I'm recording this at the moment will be the fact that they lost to their City rivals Manchester United in the FA Cup final, which did prevent them from getting the first ever double-double. Also looking back as well in hindsight, you can kind of see where they were struggling at the beginning of the season, where it didn't seem that the squad was as motivated as what they were the previous year. This has now been evidenced by the fact that Pep Guardiola himself said that this year he struggled to get himself motivated at the start, as after winning the treble at Manchester City last season, he felt that there was nothing more he could achieve there. It wasn't really until the midpoint in the season when everyone else is starting to pick up injuries and Manchester City's real squad depth comes into play that you really see the club and the squad kick on a gear. As Pep Guardiola has said himself in his last press conference at the end of the year, it wasn't really until the midpoint in the year when they realised they could win four titles in a row that the motivation really kicked in. There now just seems to be two clouds hanging over Manchester City at the moment and one is the Premier League breaches for financial fair play which they're still yet to have an outcome for and a final date to appear in court. But also now we have question marks over Pep Guardiola's long-term future at the club, as he's admitted that next season could in fact be his last. But we'll cover that further on in the video, and we'll go through the season that they've just had, where yet again they were Premier League champions. So overall, after the 38 games of the Premier League season, they ended up with 28 wins, 7 draws and 3 losses. And the real foundation of their campaign was the fact that they went undefeated in the Premier League from the 7th of December. As you would always expect with Man City, they were active in the transfer market, making a few significant signings, with their most expensive signing of the summer being Josko Gvardio, who came in from Red Bull Leipzig as one of the most highly rated centre-backs in the world. They also brought in Matthias Nunes from Wolves as backup in centre and midfield, who was also accompanied by Matteo Kovacic from Chelsea, and also pacey winger Jeremy Doku was also brought in from Rennes. It wasn't all incomings from Man City though, as they'd done their usual freshen up, and one of their biggest departures was Cole Palmer, who was sold to Chelsea, who at this stage at the moment is looking like it's a costly mistake, as he's gone on to be a phenomenal player for Chelsea. Riyad Mahrez was also shipped out to Saudi Arabia to free up some much-needed wage structure who was also accompanied out the door to Saudi by M. Eric Laporte. Also in the January transfer window, Calvin Phillips was shipped out to West Ham on loan, although his luck and performances haven't changed and West Ham still have no intent on making his loan permanent, so he's now returned to Manchester City. Looking back over the course of the season though, this year Manchester City had to win the title in a different way, as it wasn't the all-out attacking free-flowing football that was expected from the previous season. Erling Haaland wasn't on as prolific form as he was the previous season and it said so in his statistics as from the end of November until April he only went on to score four league goals. They were also heavily missing Kevin De Bruyne this season as up until the 31st of January he'd only managed to play one game in the Premier League and also Jack Grealish wasn't as of much use this year and he was also shifted down in the priority of the squad. As is always the case with Pep Guardiola, it seems to be that he rotates year on year. When one player is in favour, the following season they're not. This has been proved plenty of times over the years, especially with the revolving door of his centre-backs and whether John Stones is in or out of the team. And talking of John Stones, he was also in and out of the team quite often this season as he was dealing with several different little injuries. But as always, whenever there's a changeover in favouritism at Manchester City, new players come to the fore. And one player who definitely stood up to be counted this year was Phil Foden. He was also backed up by the ever-improving and impressive Julian Alvarez, especially as Alvarez himself played more league games than any other member of the team. Gvardio was also a bit of a slow starter in the Premier League to begin with, but once he got settled, he also proved his dominance down the left flank for Man City, and I definitely think he'll prove to be an absolutely stunning buy for Man City for years to come. He was bought at the time for having the hype and the potential of being the best centre-back in the world eventually, and Man City may have just bought him at the right time. And as always, I always find with Manchester City that they don't respect Bernardo Silva as a key member of the squad, as he never really seems to get the hero status that other players get, but yet again, he proved what an elite player he is in the Premier League and how happy Man City must have been to kept hold of him after being linked with several transfers away last summer, including to Barcelona. And when it came to the end of the season in the title race against Arsenal, one thing became key, and that was the amount of points that Man City managed to pick up after picking up wins when they were trailing earlier in the games. 
as in 13 games during the course of the season, Manchester City went behind, but they still managed to win seven of them with a win percentage of 54%, whereas Arsenal this season went behind in 10 games and only managed to pull back three to wins, which only gave them a win percentage of 30% in games that they were trailing, which overall shows the winning mentality of the Manchester City squad and also their determination and experience in title runnings. As far as player of the season for Manchester City goes, everybody gives the plaudits to Phil Foden. But myself personally, I think this has got to be Rodri, who along with Bernardo Silva, never really seems to get the credit it is due in that squad. He had a revolving door of midfield colleagues alongside him this year, with John Stones in and out of the squad consistently due to injuries. Matthias Nunes hardly really making an impact since his transfer from Wolves. Although you would realistically probably think that this is a transfer for the long term and may come into the squad more next season. And Rodri this season had to play alongside a new midfield partner in Matteo Kovacic who is settling into the club. All the while of any of the names that were beside him in midfield he always played like an absolutely dominant king. And when he's not in the team Manchester City are a much more of a fragile team. And when he does decide to go Man City will have a hard task on their hand to try and replace him. But as always, the plaudits seem to go to the youngster Phil Foden as he improves every season. And this year was no different as he scored 19 goals compared to Erling Haaland's 27. He also went on to create 13 more goals in all competitions and was not only the target man for the squad at times this season, but was also one of the leading creators. Breakthrough players this season for Man City could be Josko Gvardiol or Jeremy Doku just purely because of their transfer fees that were attached to them. But if you look over the course of the season, for youngsters breaking through, we had Rico Lewis last year and this year you had Oscar Bob. He broke through and made his debut in September this year and also scored the decisive goal against Newcastle in January for his first for the club. So as always with Man City, as it always proves, not only are they always capable of buying some of the best talent across the world, but their academy also continues to bring on some of the brightest prospects in football. So as the season wrapped up, again as Premier League champions, Man City will now inevitably start turning towards next season. Man City still have their 115 charges against them, overshadowing them. But City's squad themselves probably couldn't care less, as the biggest thing that would be overshadowing next season is the potential departure of Pep Guardiola. With Guardiola recently admitting that he's getting tired and that the Premier League title race is relentless. As he's also proved by his greatest rival Jurgen Klopp recently deciding to leave Liverpool. Also citing the same reasons that he's tired and the relentlessness of the Premier League. Man City may soon be getting news that Pep Guardiola will be serving one more year in charge. This could do two things for Man City. It could either galvanise the squad so that they push on for more success next season to send the manager out on a high. Or, as was seen with Liverpool when Jurgen Klopp decided to announce his departure early on, it galvanised the squad in the beginning, but eventually things started to fall apart and they ran out of steam. I always think it's a little bit dodgy when managers announce well ahead of time that they may be leaving at the end of the season. And so I don't expect to hear anything from Manchester City for quite a while, even if behind the scenes things are going on in place to make a succession plan. I don't think that Manchester City will want to do anything to jeopardise the juggernaut from moving forward. And I wouldn't expect any kind of announcement from Pep Guardiola until Easter next year at the earliest. As far as the summer transfer window is concerned, I think Man City will do their inevitable tinkering here and there. With the likely departure of Calvin Phillips if they can get him away on a permanent transfer or even a loan. And another player, surprisingly, that could go out the door could be Jack Grealish. Their biggest concern for departures though could be Edison who has recently been linked with a move to Saudi Arabia and is rumoured to want a change. So Man City's biggest decision over the summer could be recruiting a new number one goalkeeper. So Manchester City ended the season as our 2023-2024 Premier League champions. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of their season last year. And also Man City supporters, let us know how you felt your season went. And also let us know any players that you would like out of the club to transfer. And also any players that you would like to be brought in and areas of improvement. As always, thank you very much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed and please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future football content.